Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Slides. In today's video, we'll be exploring the Perceptron, one of the simplest yet most fundamental building blocks of neural networks. Let's dive right in. The Perceptron is the simplest type of neural network used for classifying patterns that are linearly separable. This means we can divide the data into two distinct classes, like C1 and C2, using a straight line, or in higher dimensions, a hyperplane, as a decision boundary. However, if these classes move too close or overlap, they become non-linearly separable, which is beyond the Perceptron's capability. At its core, the Perceptron consists of a single neuron with adjustable synaptic weights and a bias term. The Perceptron algorithm, first introduced by Frank Rosenblatt in 1958, adjusts these parameters during training. Rosenblatt also proved that if the training data is linearly separable, the Perceptron algorithm will converge and find the perfect decision boundary. This proof is famously known as the Perceptron Convergence Theorem. Now let's break down the key components of the Perceptron. The input vector represents your data. For example, if you're classifying fruits, the input might include weight, color intensity, or size. The weight vector adjusts as the Perceptron learns. It represents the importance of each input feature. The linear combiner output calculates a weighted sum of the inputs and bias. Finally, the Perceptron applies a sign function to this output, determining the class as either plus one or minus one. Now, let's break down the Perceptron algorithm step by step to understand how it learns from data. One, initialization. The weights are initialized to zero or small random values and a small learning rate denoted as key. The learning rate controls how much the weights are adjusted during training. Two, activation. At each step, the Perceptron processes a training example it calculates the weighted sum of inputs plus the bias using the formula. Three, computation of actual response. The Perceptron applies the sign function to this weighted sum. Four, weight update. If the Perceptron's output doesn't match the desired output, the weights are updated using this rule. Five, continuation. This process repeats for all training examples until the Perceptron correctly classifies the data or a stopping criterion is met. Let's bring this to life with a simple example. Imagine we're trying to classify a fruit based on its weight and color intensity. The input vector for a fruit is x equal 150.8, where 1 is the bias term, 150 is the weight, and 0.8 is the color intensity. Before we continue, let's quickly explain what is learning rate, actual response, and desired response. The learning rate is a small positive value that controls how much the Perceptron adjusts its weights with each mistake. A smaller learning rate means slower learning but more stability, while a larger rate means faster learning but higher risk of overshooting the correct weights. The actual response is the output that the Perceptron produces after processing the input data. It is calculated using the current weights and the input vector, then passed through the sign function. In our case, the Perceptron computes the weighted sum of the input values. The sign function then determines whether the Perceptron should output plus one or minus one. The desired response is the correct output that the Perceptron should ideally produce for a given input. This is usually provided as part of the training data. It is the label or the true category that corresponds to the input example. For example, if we are classifying fruits and the training input represents an apple, the desired response would be plus one. In our case, the desired response for the current fruit apple is Ds equals plus one. Okay now, first we start with all weights set to zero. The learning rate in is set to one, which means we fully adjust the weights for each mistake. Next, calculate the weighted sum of inputs and bias. Apply the sign function to none. Since error equals zero, the perceptron outputs zero. However, the desired response for this fruit is plus one, meaning it's classified as an apple. Because the Perceptron made a mistake, we update the weights. So we get new weights like this. The Perceptron's strength lies in its simplicity. It works well for linearly separable data, but struggles with complex data sets that aren't linearly separable. That's all for today's session on the Perceptron. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Smart Slides for more exciting content. See you next time.